Hi there, and welcome to another Collections Unboxing video with me, Emma Daly, Director of Collections and Exhibitions at the Seward House Museum. Now that the holidays are upon us, I thought it might be fun to look at some Seward family recipes. Luckily for us, we actually have some cookbooks and handwritten recipes from the family that can afford us a glimpse into what might have graced their dining room table. So I've pulled a couple of things out of the archive to show you today, starting with this record book here. So you can see here, the covers come off and it's a bit fragile. I'm only going to flip a couple of pages as a result. Um, so if we open the first page here, we'll see that it is inscribed Francis Seward, March, 1904. So this Francis is not the wife of William Henry Seward, nor was it his daughter, Francis, known more commonly as Fanny. Now, this Francis is actually the younger daughter of William H. Seward Jr., which I know is very confusing to have so many repetitive names. But our third generation Francis went by the nickname of Fan, if that helps. So Fan collected a number of recipes, some typed and many handwritten. We're going to take a closer look at one of them to start off with. Let's take a couple of couple of blank pages here, but then we have this recipe here for a bisque of oysters. It is a lot of ingredients, including but not limited to cream, chicken stock, stale bread, celery, onion, and mace. But the last line on the back of the recipe promises that this is one of the most delicious soups made. High praise indeed. I don't know if Fan's grandfather, William Seward, had some variation of this bisque, but we do know that he was an oyster fiend. In fact, archaeological work done on the grounds here found an old trash heap from the kitchen and several oyster shells, like this one seen here, were uncovered. So we could very well be looking at the remnants from one of Seward's meals. So here we have another soup recipe, this one handwritten, and it's for calf's head soup. This concoction goes by another name, which is mock turtle soup. And it is a known dish that the Seward family served and ate. Now, why is it called mock turtle soup? Well, turtle soup was a popular dish throughout England, Germany, and the United States. It was so popular, in fact, that the green turtles used to make the dish were nearly hunted to extinction. Boiled calf's head and other organ meats were found to be a good substitute and thus mock turtle soup was born. In fact, the faux reptilian soup became even more popular than the original. It was not only enjoyed by the Sewards, but a version of calves head soup was even served at Abraham Lincoln's first inauguration. Finally, we have this 122 year old cookbook, Catering for Special Occasions by Fanny Farmer. Yes, another Fanny has entered the building. This Fanny, who lived from 1857 to 1915, studied at the Boston Cooking School. She became known as the mother of level measurements. Her first book, the Boston Cooking School Cookbook, was the first cookbook to use standardized measurements in its recipes, meaning that both experienced and novice cooks would always get the same results. In this book, Fanny has written out suggested menus with recipes for special events, including Thanksgiving. So let's take a look. If we flip back here to the Thanksgiving section, we can see her first suggested menu of what she would serve, starting with, again, we have our oysters with sherry, very popular. They have a Thanksgiving soup. They were still having a roasted stuffed turkey here in 1911. We've got a uh, boiled onions, chicken pie, Puritan putty, pudding, sorry, which is made with like crackers, uh, looks uh, appetizing. You can see she then tells you how to make these recipes. Uh, like any other uh, person who writes recipes, there's always a little bit of story too. Um, and then we can see she also then has a second suggested menu uh, she's got New England Thanksgiving pudding, brown bread sandwiches, some cucumber cups, and a squash souffle, for example. And of course, you got these lovely little illustrations, too. 
Now, it's not in this book. It's in her original one. But there is a Fanny Farmer recipe that I actually make myself, which is for her baked macaroni and cheese. Now, admittedly, I doctored the roux a little bit with the addition of onion and garlic powder and a little bit of Creole seasoning. But still, it's a classic dish that is a great side dish for any holiday meal. So I hope you all have some good food coming your way too. I'll see you next time.